three riding one and a real colorful one. Oh, interesting. If we can keep that out of the papers, it'll run us if it gets in the paper. I agree. So I wouldn't tell even Dick Goodman about it. No, I just, I just you and Jack know it. But tell him he can take a jet star and go up to see Steinbeck and take the platform and ask him if he just won't rewrite it and edit it. And uh, uh, then write me an acceptance speech from it. All right, sir. Now, Dick's writing me an acceptance speech. Yes, sir. And I guess it'll be based on the platform, won't it? Not, 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 uh, not particularly. Well, that's what we're going to carry out. That's what we're going to do. Well, but it, 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 but it will, it will have some of the general principles. I sure think we ought to talk about the, they talk about the backlash. We won't talk about the Republican backlash. I'd really hit them. Man's only got every pull show. Only got one out of every three. Our people really ought to drill that home. Huh? Right. Everyone that makes speeches. Did y'all have any good speakers on poverty? Yes, I guess Landrum was the best one. Good speeches and, and good speeches and good speakers. Who wrote the speeches? Oh, Ira Walsh, Hal Pacius, uh, uh, Adam Yarmolinsky, and uh, how did you get by with Yarmolinsky today? Uh, with uh, uh, it did not come up on the floor. Uh, right. And Jimmy Roosevelt uh, inserted uh, the record, the letter that Yarmolinsky wrote to defense to McNamara uh, two years ago. It, uh, clarifying his record and denying these charges. He put that in the, in the record. Uh, Roosevelt and some of these liberal congressmen are very upset. They feel that Germanis has got the shaft. And uh, uh, it's just been, it's been tough holding some of them down today from saying anything on the floor. But uh, it would have been unwise for for Yarmolinsky for him to say anything. Yes, yeah, unwise for Roosevelt, too. He's a plain damn fool. Yarmolinsky better stay in the Defense Department. McNamara is the best defender he's got and and the safest one he's got. And he ought to tell him that's where he won't stay until we can get him confirmed as Assistant Secretary of Defense. Well, that's, that's great. I'm glad to hear you say that. I won't tell him that, but I'm glad to hear you say yeah, that. Yeah, I'd tell him that I think that he ought to stay there. And, McNamara's told me he wants to try to get him Assistant Secretary of Defense, and I wouldn't mind that going to bat if his record's clean. Right. Has he belonged to any liberal organization? The liberals, yes. Yes, but well, no communist organization. And in those liberal organizations, he has opposed the communists and has driven them out. And that's well, now, what liberal organizations that are questionable does he belong to? The American uh, Veterans Committee. You familiar with that? No. Uh, that's a small group of veterans who, who, who organized to uh, fight for liberal causes. 20, 25 years ago, worked as a member, et cetera. In the beginning, there was a big fight over whether the communists were dominated or not. Yarmolinsky helped expose and drive them out, and that's a matter of record. Well, uh, is, it, a it, worker. is it has it been cited? Uh, no, sir. It, it, no, sir. It has not been cited by the attorney general's list. Uh, there were, there were, there were, his mother and father at one time joined to an organization that was cited, but they got out of it before it was cited when they learned that it was uh, uh, communist oriented. Well, we'll just put up a fight if we win this election. Like McNamara told me he wanted to make him assistant secretary of defense, and I told him that's fine if he could do it. And that was three months ago. Right. Four months ago. Uh, well, that's good. Uh, but now we've got to get, to, and I don't want to commit, uh, I say, I'm going to rewrite your poverty program. Y'all, you boys got together and wrote this stuff, and I thought we were just going to have the NYA. As I understood it, you know what I think about the poverty program, what I thought we were going to do? Well, I thought we were going to have CCC camps. We got that. And I thought we were going to have a community action where a city or a county or a school district or some governmental agency could sponsor a project, State Highway Department sponsored, and we'd pay the labor and, uh, and a very limited amount of materials on it. But to uh, make them put up most of the materials and a good deal of supervision and so forth, there's a lot of good that. Uh, I thought that we'd say to a high school boy that's about to drop out, we'll let you work in the library or sweep the floors or work in the shrubs or, or pick the rocks, and we'll pay you enough so you can stay in school. We got that. I thought you'd let a college boy do the same thing. We got and that. a college girl. Now, I never heard of any liberal outfits that's where you could subsidize anybody. I think I'm against that. I just, uh, if you want to do it in the Peace Corps, then that's your private thing, and it's Kennedy. But my my Johnson program, I'm against subsidizing any private organization. Now, if we had $100 billion, we might need to. But with all the governmental agencies in this country, I'd a whole lot rather Dick Daly do it than the Urban League. 
state, and he's got heads of departments, and he's got experienced people that are handling hundreds of millions of dollars. And every one of these places, I'd make them come in and sponsor these projects. And I just think it makes us wide open, and I don't want anybody to get any grants. Now, you got the grants out for farmers, didn't you? All together. And uh, and, and uh, got that thing out on handicap that I mentioned to you last night. Uh, no, everybody has to work. Well, can anybody explain to me why in the hell it costs $4,600 a year for a boy? Well, Shriver can better than I can, but it boils down to basic to, to the to the basic fact that uh, travel uh, for the of the number of it, you've got to have more instructors for this because these boys are more undisciplined, and so per capita, per ten boys, you've got to have at least uh, one. They're figuring one instructor uh, until they test it and see whether or not it goes. That adds up your cost. Uh, uh, the other things are food, and so forth. And it's on a 12-month basis rather than on a nine-month basis, which a college education is figured at. Well, I know that anybody can board for hundred dollars a month. That's twelve hundred, and I know you're going to pay them fifty. Isn't that right? That's right. That's six hundred. So that's eighteen hundred. And uh, they say exclusive that you can't equipment. So you would have to, according to this, have a. Uh, about $2,800 for teachers. That don't make sense. I don't know enough about... Uh, well, you find out enough about it, because you, you, you're not that dumb. And you have this program, and you've been running it, and that's the big question I've been asked about every time I talk to somebody. You tell them, and I won't see why we can't cut that down, because that's going to have to stand scrutiny. I'm going to put an auditor on that. All right. Now, on these five people, let's just be awfully careful that we don't get committed to anybody. And... Any of these uh, uh, measures, what you could negro woman that's coming down that you're putting in charge, giving out interviews in New York Post. Let's be awful careful that I'm not committed to point a damn one of them. Exactly. And I want to get some real, able, tough people that are good administrators in these places. Right. And I'm willing for him to go to the best businessman he's got, Sears and Roebuck, and every place he can get a businessman, and draft him, and Tom Watson give him a man, some of them would bring him in, but I sure do want people to stand up on this hill, because it's a Johnson program, and it's going to be disgraceful by the election if we're not careful. That's right. So you see that he understands that. I, I talked to him about that today, and, and, and right after that, he sent me over a memo to you about one possibility, and wanted, your, your, wanted you to look at it. Very able young businessman who's the executive vice president of Encyclopedia Britannica, which is a He's going for great guns out there. And I'll send that down to you. Well, what I want is I want somebody that uh, I don't, Bill Benton's outfit don't appeal to me much, but uh, I, I want somebody that's really come up competitively and born on a farm and knows something about poverty himself. And, you know, that's got, that's had a little hockey between his toes. Right. Well, we'll find it. I, I agree with you 100% on that. And I have a couple of guys in mind to suggest. Right, that's good. That's good. Now, uh, what is Dutton doing? Well, he's put together this uh, a number of uh, big research books for us. He's uh, organized people to uh, answer charges, make speeches, and get on the attack. He's doing that. He's uh, putting together a lot of pamphlets, which I've been reading this weekend, okay, for the convention and the campaign. Uh, he's... Uh, brought uh, some advanced uh, some advanced speech writers in. Uh, he's trying to fire some people over the committee who, who are real hacks on that research committee. Uh, That's the best news I've heard. Uh, he says they're all just hacks. Do you ever get any re reaction to him on Bobby? Yes, sir. What did yes, he say? He, he, he told me that I was for him. He said if the president wanted him, I was not. If he wasn't, now that it's behind, uh, I haven't thought about it anymore. Uh, and let me see, who was it? Well, Bill Haddad told me that uh, Bobby was in New York today and saw Wagner. That the story up there is that Bobby told Wagner he was going to run for uh, the Senate and that he had told you that. Well, he hadn't at all. I told him I didn't know anything about it. But, uh, and, and Goodwin told me that uh, Bobby is going to take a cruise next week and, and decide whether or not he runs for the Senate. And uh, his his uh, feeling was that he would.
But uh, Dutton, uh, Dutton did tell me. He came the next morning and said, I, I guess you know that I, I was for Bobby if the president was. Well, we ought to have brought him in if he was, Bill. we got to watch that. Now, can't we learn from that? Well, but he had told me, I'd asked him that before we ever brought him in, and he said, I'm for whoever the president wants, which is not inconsistent with what he said. Now, tell George, if you sent this to him by wire, this statement, have it all men that graft up tonight on poverty. I will do it. And, well, I'll just read it, and I'll tell him. That's okay. what I'll do. And then uh, you get me the one, the best, the good ones on the uh, race. Right. Get them cleared out by Russell. Right. And you better get me uh, uh, that edited transcript of my meeting with the governor. It doesn't cost you anything to put this on a wire and get it down here, does it? No, sir. I'll get that thing so I'll have it here tomorrow, the governor of uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. All right, sir. Now, we ought to have some real breakthrough on this employment. I don't know what's new, what we can do, but if we've got poverty passed, I can really brag on it and see if words can't give me a, a real blowing up statement bragging on it. Something I could say that's new, predicting it, what's going to happen or something. Now, how are you all going to get rid of these kids right quick that are on employment rolls? When you get your bill. I don't know, Mr. President, on that. I do know I talked to the Secretary of Work about what he's going to do to get 150,000 kids under the work training program. And uh, he's moving ahead in that regard. He wants to try to, you know, by, by mid-October, have it uh, at least 75,000 of them on work training. Work uh, well, that's this year we ought to have a conference on it. If it passes tomorrow, uh, we ought to have one set up Monday. That's right. Well, that's exactly right. Better set one up for me Monday as driver and have him bring them all in. All right. Uh, Wants the biggest signing we ever, ever had on it, too. So I'll have this poverty statement. And you better get the questions and answers in the morning, like what I'm going to say about Mississippi. What are they going to say? What question do you think you would ask me? What do you think about uh, this Mississippi situation or something? Uh, yes, sir. Are we going to indict them with a federal grand jury or? We haven't found out actually who did it yet. I no, mean, we're not ready, are we? The loads told me tonight they were getting pretty close, but we probably won't be close enough tomorrow. The same thing about Have they violated any federal law? I don't know. They violated, they died under state law in Georgia, didn't they? Yes, sir. That's right. The, the boy, the fellas who shot that Negro. Now, Joe Rao was on television and uh, just raising hell today on the Freedom Party. At making the speech to him, their convention said he's got to, they got to be seated. Now that's going to ruin us if we do that. That's right. And you better tell uh, Humphrey, you better call him and say, now I'm taking no part in vice president, but you know I like you and how much I admire you. But uh, the president's gone and Rao is on television today and there's one thing that will make everybody, you already got 15 states in the South that not very much for you. But there's one thing that you want to, I want to caution you against, is having anybody else sponsoring you, like the Attorney General. Because a lot of people coming in saying that, uh, that you're sucking up to him that picture. That's number one, I want to caution you against it. And number two, if you've got any labor friends or any other friends, get a hold of Rao and find that Rao doesn't get committed to seat freedom because you run all the border states out. And it came to us better good to see them. Nothing good can come from it. We've already got the Negro vote. We've already got the liberal vote. But we've got a fighting chance in Texas to win. And if you can't do this, well, if you haven't met your first test as vice president. And this is up to you to corral the meanies and the liberals and everybody and get around, quit pledging these folks and not be coming. He's saying, I'm going to the floor fight. Now, if you can't do that, and the president tells me he signed that to you and he knows you're taking care of it. But he's gone now, and I just want to tell you that some people came in here today and they're using this on you. So you keep putting your arm around somebody going down the corridor with them, number one. And I'll give you suggestions from time to time. But I know of the people that in this race, the one he likes the most is you. But he's getting lots of heat. 
and just say, Governor Brown's supposed to be for you, but he's in here, here in the White House this week, and so forth. Gotcha. Okay. Bye. Now, I've got to watch this press. I've got to get something from Gordon on economy. Right. I've got to get something in Hillary. Something in Hillary.